Heide Marie. It's short Heiden. Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. Like Heidi Klum? Yes, like Heidi Klum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, when you decided that you want to explore space in your life, when you was a child and maybe when you was a student? Um, I don't think I got very serious about um, becoming an astronaut until, um, you know, I had already finished college. I had been in the Navy um, for about five years and I met another officer who was talking about NASA. And so when I talked to him and I, you know, I learned more about the NASA astronaut program and that you don't have to be a pilot and that I met the requirements, I thought, well, you know what, I could become an astronaut. So I went ahead and applied. Did your parents or relatives support you in this decision? Um, so by the time I was started talking about the astronaut program, my father had already passed away. Mm -hmm. um, so he was no longer around. Um, but I have no doubt that if he had been um, I think he would have been very, 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 very happy, very, very proud. Um, because even when I finished university and, and went into the Navy, I went in as an officer. And so for him, that was something very important for him to be able to say, um, you know, moja dočka oficirka. That was, you know, that was something he was very, very proud of. And uh, so I have no doubt if he, you know, for him to run around and say moja dočka ostaralta, you know, that would have been just, for, for him, something very, very special. Um, my mother was a little bit nervous. Um, like mom, yeah. Like mom, <laughs> like all moms. And when, uh, I remember specifically when I, when I told her that I was flying a second time, that her response back to me was, oh, couldn't they find somebody else? <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, so she was, she was not, I, I think she was not quite sure about my, my career choice at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what was the most difficult in your preparation to your first flight? Do you remember? So probably the hardest thing was the preparation for spacewalks. So, um, the training we do is six hours underwater because our spacewalks are six and a half hours mm -hmm. long and so we train for, for six hours um, in the pool so that we pretty much do the same thing we do in space and the only reason we do it a half an hour sh shorter in the pool um, is because um, if we can finish all the tasks in the water in six hours, they know that in space it'll probably take us a little bit longer mm -hmm. um, just because of the difference of the space environment. And, uh, and so that was the hardest um, physically was to do the, the training underwater. What did you expect for your first fly? Do you remember? Um, well, I, had, I really didn't have... Um, these set expectations. Um, it was I, just like a job for you? No, it was, <laughs> no, it was just like um, going up into space and, and I had no expectations of, of what it was going to be like, but I was just so excited about everything. I mean, there was just everything about being in space was just, was just amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, from the, from the very first time I get out of my chair and, I'm, and I, you know, I push off my chair and next thing I know, I'm floating up here. And you look down in your chair and you're like, oh. okay, I should not be floating <laughs> above my chair. And, and then I go to push and I find out, okay, I'm pushing this way, but I really want to go that way. Now I need to pay attention mm -hmm. and don't push too hard because you just run into things. Um, and so it takes you a while to get used to being up in space. And then you, you get the chance to look out the window and you just go, wow, that's the <laughs> earth. You know. But what was the biggest, what were the biggest uh, fears? Um, I really didn't have any fears. You are um, strong. <laughs> but um, I, was very, I was very anxious about um, what was I going to feel like in space. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the astronauts and, and, the, and the doctors tell us that, okay, it's perfectly normal. You know, that 60% you know, of the people get space adaptation sickness, which is just motion sickness in space. Mm -hmm. And they say that's very normal. You know, it, it happens. It just takes your body time to get used to being in space. And I, you know, I've been on ships before where I've gotten a little bit of seasickness and I just didn't want to have to deal with that in space. And there's, you know, if it happens, it happens. And uh, so I was just very anxious about, okay, am I going to get sick in space? And it turned out I went up and I did not get sick. I never felt like I was going to throw up. So it was like, okay, this is great. I know. Nice. So the second time I was like, hey, I know what it's going to feel like. And, uh, One day in space, how it looks like? You woke up at seven o'clock, I don't know. 
So, so I guess you could say, you know, we wake up mm -hmm. at, we wake up when the schedule says wake up. You know, they give us eight hours to mm -hmm. sleep. Um, so if you say we get up at, uh, you know, seven o'clock, mm -hmm. we get up, um, typical day in space, first hour and a half after wake up, the schedule just says post sleep. So after sleep. And that's the time where you, you get up, you get dressed for the day, you, you know, brush your teeth, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you know, go to the bathroom, do everything you need to do. You get a chance to, okay, let, let's see what kind of email came in the night before you eat breakfast. And you do all of that. Oh, and then you have to put, you have to put your sleeping bag away because we all have sleeping bags, but you don't want them all around the, the, the cabin during the day. So you roll that up, put everything away, and then you get ready for the day. Um, the events of the day depends upon what day it is. Mm -hmm. um, every day is every day in space is different. Um, at least on the shuttle, on the on the space station, you're up there for six months. They they have more of a routine schedule, but on the shuttle, our days were just so different. Um, you know, on the first day and the the after the first morning in space, flight day two, there's a there's a whole set of of, of tasks that we have to do on flight day two because that's your first day in orbit. We you know, after Columbia, we now do an inspection of the vehicle. That takes up a lot of time. Um, so some crew members would be doing that inspe inspection. The rest of us are checking out the spacesuits because we're now up in orbit. We're going to use the spacesuits to go out and do our spacewalks. We do that checkout. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, there's a lot of different things going on. Um, the schedule lies out every procedure you need to do and how mm -hmm. long it's going to take. And so that's the schedule. And that's our day throughout the day. Um, and then at the end of the day, the last two and a half hours before going to sleep, the schedule just has one big block that says pre-sleep, so before sleep. And during the, that time is when, you know, if you didn't finish something during the day, you can finish it then. Um, we really try not to do that because it just makes it difficult because the rest of the time, you know, you have to eat dinner, you know, you, you get it gives you a little bit of free time to, you know, okay, send send, you know, an email home, mm -hmm. take pictures, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, and then when it gets time to go to bed, um, then, you know, you have to obviously brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, get ready, get your sleeping like bag Like a normal out. life, like Just a like normal, a normal life, yeah. <laughs> you, except you, you pull your sleeping bag back out, you set that up. And on both my flights, my commanders mm -hmm. were very strict about the schedule says go to sleep. We will, you know, so, you know, 11 o'clock at night, you turn, you turn the, the lights off, but it's not really 11 o'clock at night because day night doesn't mean anything in space. We, uh, we go around the Earth every hour and a half. So every 45 minutes, the sun comes up. 45 minutes later, the sun goes down and it's dark. And then 45 <laughs> minutes later, it repeats itself. So we really don't have day night per se. Mm -hmm. um, and we go to sleep when the schedule says sleep. Okay, thank you. Uh, do astronauts have superstition? Superstition, yeah? Um, and which superstition? Uh, let me see. Um, some of them do. Some of them do. Mm -hmm. I think some people do. Um, but it all depends on what they do. I'm trying to, th I'm trying to think if we had any superstitions um, in flight. Uh, no, but I know there's some of them that we do like before flight. Um, one of the traditions we do after we get suited up is the commander of the of, of our crew plays a card game. Card game? Yeah. Whoa. You know, <laughs> not poker, but it's something else like that. And uh -huh. he plays this card game with the other, you know, the other um, senior managers mm -hmm. of NASA. And it's a tradition. The commander plays this card game until, you know, he gets a losing hand. And then we can go out to the mission. Um, you know, does it make any sense? Nobody knows exactly why we started doing this, mm -hmm. but we now do it. <laughs> okay, what do you think about space industry now, and uh, what uh, should be the next step in this industry, your opinion? So I think the, the, so the space industry kind of took a little bit of a, a change, at least in the United States, where, um, so going back to the space station, um, you know, since right now we have to fly with the Russians, um, NASA had a program called Constellation um, that they were designing a capsule to go back to the space station. But in, uh, in 2010, they, they um, the uh, NASA headquarters and, and, and Congress made the decision to 
not have NASA, the government, design the spacecraft, but rather have private industry design it. And so the big difference was is that instead of NASA being involved in the design of the spacecraft and having, uh, you know, either saying, yes, this is, you know, we like this design, we like this design, um, they put out the proposal to companies to say, we want you to fly four people to space and you design the spacecraft. So that's what we're doing now. They had, they did have, um, you know, initially there were four companies that gave proposals, and then from those four companies, NASA selected two. Um, one of them is, mm -hmm. is, is uh, SpaceX, and then the other one is Boeing. And uh, so both those companies right now are are building or have built um, capsules, and so now they're they're finishing their final testing, and uh, hopefully sometime next year. Uh, Boeing and SpaceX will both launch, so now we will be launching astronauts into space from the United States. But the big difference, but that was one step in, from in the space industry that was commercial in the sense that NASA didn't work with the contractors to design the spacecraft. We just said, give us a, you know, you figure out the design, just take four people up into space. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one step in there. Now, funding that design of the spacecraft um, NASA did that because nobody else is paying um, for design of a spacecraft. It's a, it is all NASA. But the next step after that would be that instead of having, you know, professional um, astronauts being the only ones to fly in space, is you could buy a ticket to go fly in space. Really? Yeah. Me too. You too. <laughs> um, the only problem with it is that um, the tickets are going to be very expensive. <laughs> oh, my salary. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot more than my salary ever was. <laughs> A lot more money than I even completely have, mm -hmm. um, because I think the latest cost that I saw was was seventy million dollars. Oh. But you know what? There mm -hmm. are people out there that have seventy million dollars and want to go fly in space. Maybe it's a dream for someone. It is a dream for someone, and there are people that have that kind of money that mm -hmm. will do it. But so let's talk about dreams. If you have a dream, what should you do to make it real? Your opinion. Um, so if you have a dream, um, first thing you need to really ask yourself is that, is it a realistic dream, okay? So is it, is it realistic? I mean, um, you know, for me, it, even though it wasn't really my dream until, yeah, maybe by the end when I started getting serious about the space program, it was my dream to fly in space. Um, so it has to be a realistic dream, you know? So for example, for, so if you, if you wanna fly in space, um, you have to go to college, go to university, you have to study a technical field. Um, so if you're, a musician um, and you want to be an astronaut, right now that's not realistic because those aren't the people. So, so that's why I say you have to have a realistic dream. Um, and so, so have a dream, figure out what the, what the requirements are and, and keep pursuing that dream. Um, have a plan of how you're going to get to that dream. You know, so I'm going to be an astronaut, okay, so I need to go to college and you're studying engineering. Um, and I'm going to do really good at my engineering job. Um, I'm going to get a job that has something to do with the space program. Doesn't necessarily have to be in space. I mean, I was fixing ships underwater, um, which people think is pretty far removed from space. But if you look at astronauts going outside on spacewalks, probably more like the work I did than a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you so you get that experience, um, and then you just you 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 go apply to the program. And even if they tell you no. Go figure out why they said no, and then see what you need to do to make it better. Um, it may just be something as simple as, well, you know what, we really needed to get some doctors and chemists, and you're an engineer, so we didn't pick very many en engineers. Okay, so I'll just keep trying. Um, it might be, well, you know what, all of the, you know, my package really wasn't strong enough. All of the astronauts, you know, do this. Okay, so I'll, I'll you know, I'll start learning, I'll learn foreign languages, I'll learn Russian. Um, because Russian working on the space station. Um, so doing things like that that will make you a better candidate, um, but keep pursuing your dream. Um, and as I always tell them that just make sure whatever your dream is, that it really is your, it is your dream um, because even though you don't achieve that dream, you may, you know, you may never become an astronaut. But that's okay because if you, pick something along the way that you like to do and you were really working hard at it and you enjoyed your job, then that's not to say that your life was not successful.
So uh, do you have some Ukrainian tradition in your family or in your home? Maybe you celebrate some Ukrainian holidays. Um, yes, we always celebrate um, you know, Christmas and Easter mm -hmm. um, and do those in the Ukrainian way. So on Christmas Eve, um, I will cook the Ukrainian dinner, Svetlivacha. Really? Yes. You cooked varaniki? I cooked varaniki, <laughs> in holopchi, <laughs> in borscht, in kutia, in kompot. Wow. In tak dali, tak dali. Novorani stala and uh, boksha rajdaya. Wow. <laughs> Very nice to hear it. <laughs> yes, I do, because I have, so I do have, um, I have a couple of CDs of, mm -hmm. of Ukrainian koledea. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, at Christmas time we have a Christmas playlist um, that we play a various kolya uh, or various Christmas music, and it's a and it's on shuffle. So we'll have American Christmas carols. We have German. We have Ukrainian. We have um, international family. international. Yes. So now we'll make a blitz. Are you ready? Okay. Maybe coffee after blitz. <laughs> Before blitz. <laughs> So I have, you will choose just one, one answer, first or second one. So, about movie, Gravitation or Interstellar? Interstellar. Elon Musk, Richard Branson or Jeff Bezos? Um, Elon Musk. Okay. Diving or spacewalk? Spacewalk. One more space fly or holiday in Caribbean island? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's, oh that one's hard. <laughs> Um, both. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for Thank me you. to talk with you. It was nice to talk to you Thank too. Thank you so much.